All right, guys, today we're going to be testing more products. Shocking, I know. First thing that we're going to be testing, if I can get it out of here, it is going to be the Power XL electric grill. Now, I don't really care about this grill so much, and there's nothing really about it that there's like, I have no doubt that it's going to work. What I want to test and what I'm what am I even trying to say? What I want to test is that it claimed to be smokeless. That's the part I'm interested in because I I just don't see that happening because there's no, like, this thing doesn't have magical powers. There's no, like, magical vent that's going to take the smoke away. You can't just, like, evaporate the smoke and just make it disappear. So I don't know how it can claim to be smokeless. So let's plug this in. Okay. So we got, we have different temperature options. What we're gonna do, the first thing that we're gonna test with it is going to be bacon, something that smokes like crazy. So if it truly is smokeless and it doesn't smoke with bacon, why is everything beeping? What is even going on? Anyway, so we're gonna test bacon. Bacon smokes a lot. If it can make the bacon not smoke, I'll be shocked. It seems to go up to 450. I don't know if you're supposed to cook bacon on 450, but, uh, Let's just go all the way. 450. I assume this thing will beep or do something whenever it's ready. So it turns out whenever this thing is done uh, heating up, it actually does nothing. The Except for whenever it's heating up, the light uh, blinks. And then whenever it's done, the light just stays solid. So nothing fancy. That feels nice and hot. And for those wondering, I did wash this inner thing before I put it in here. So. A lot of people yelled at me for that last time and said I should like wash the stuff. So let's throw some bacon on here. Peel apart. We're not, we're not, we're not going down this rabbit hole again. That thing gets me every time. They always want you to peel something apart. Oh, don't tell me my sword's getting dull. They always want you to peel something apart. There's nothing to peel. Yeah, there we go. We'll peel that apart. Let's put lots of bacon because also, All right. I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, this bacon we are gonna need for one of our other uh, products. Let's see if you can make this smokeless. I don't think I have any utensils out here. This thing is actually pretty loud. Like, if I was in the house, this would be obnoxious. I don't see any smoke. Maybe we'll close the lid and see if it smokes. But where would the smoke be going? It can't just be disappearing. I see a little bit of smoke coming out of here. But other than that, let's see if when we open the lid, if there's smoke. very strange okay so that fan that's what that noise is fan oh is there just a fan that blows away the smoke so it's not smokeless it just moves the smoke somewhere else because now you can see the smoke coming out of the edges and if you look at the glass you can see when I turn the fan on it like clears up All right, let's let that build up for a second. All right, guys, so before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by Factor. <laughs> a little warning, if your cooking skills are like mine, this is the one for you. Factory is a food delivery service that delivers fresh, never frozen meals straight to your door. And all of the Factor meals are curated by a team of culinary experts, and they only use the freshest ingredients in all the Factor meals. And all of the Factor meals are free of hormones, antibiotics, refined sugar, and GMOs. So the way that the meal plans work is that you can get from between four and 18 meals per week, depending on your specific needs. And you can easily add meals, you can take meals away, you can do whatever you need to to fit your specific needs. And if you need to, you can even skip a week. And now my favorite part, and the part that I love the most about these type of meals, is that they are easy to cook. You just take them, you just take them out of the cardboard sleeve, 
put them in the microwave for two minutes, and then bam, you're done. Peel the plastic off and eat it. It's simple, it's easy. I love that. And for me, in my everyday life, that is about as good as it gets. Just as anything that I can just walk to the fridge, pull it out, put it in the microwave, it's done. That's, that's absolutely perfect for me, and I'm sure it's perfect for a lot of you. And it doesn't even stop there. You can also amp up your order with things like, with add-ons like proteins, juices, energy bites, desserts, smoothies. They have a nice, I think, strawberry banana and some tropical fruit. These things are delicious. So if you're interested, you can go to go.factor75.com forward slash TylerTube60. Use code TylerTube60 at checkout, and you can get 60% off your first box. And all the links will be in the description. Ah, you see that? Smoke. I guess that could have been steam. Is that how they can say that it's smokeless? Is it just blows the smoke in other places? But that doesn't make any sense. Let's go ahead and flip this bacon over. Oh, there we go. Maybe now it'll start. And now it'll start smoking. For what we're going to do with this bacon, we need it to be nice and crispy. Oh, see? I don't know if you can see it. There's smoke. The smoke is coming up. Let's turn the fan on. And now it kind of goes away. Whenever you, like, look around, it doesn't, like, look smoky in here. I don't see any, like, smoke in the lights or anything. I just went back behind the camera and looked this way. I don't see anything. This is kind of, it's kind of working. And I don't know how or why. Because it can't, it can't be making the smoke just disappear, right? Because as soon as I turn the fan off, it's coming out. So it's got to be just like dissipating it into the air. And then at some point, if you cooked, like if you put this in like a small kitchen and you cooked long enough, the smoke has to, it, it, there's no way it wouldn't build up. I don't know. I think our bacon is about done. Yeah. We're not done with the smokeless grill. We have another thing that we're gonna cook on here. As of right now, I think, oh, see, here's, here comes a lot of smoke from the grease. Let's turn that on. I think it's just blowing the smoke out of the bottle. Yeah, I can see it over here. The smoke's just coming out from under the bottom. Maybe it's coming out of here. Okay, this is not a smokeless grill. This is just a smoke rearranger grill. Now I can see it. So I, I gotta cook the rest of this bacon for our other stuff, and we'll be back. All right, so I cooked the rest of that bacon. I don't know if you can tell on camera, it is very smoky in here. So the smokeless grill, absolutely not, not smokeless at all. It looks like a horror movie is about to be filmed in here or something. This, after like I got through the second half of the pack of bacon, the smoke got really bad. I don't know if the grease got built up or what it was. Next thing that we're gonna be testing is a stuffed burger press. This is a device that helps you create burgers that you can stuff with things. And that's why we needed uh, to cook the rest of the bacon so that we can put some bacon and some cheese inside of a burger. I don't know why all my products recently are things that need to be stuffed. Yeah, let's see. So this is what it is. It's just a two-piece thing. Put meat in here. Make it. <coughs> it's got like a little hole in it. And you fill it up. So we got our ground beef. It said place about a third of a pound. That was like a third of a pound to me. Actually beautiful. Look at that. Now we have like a little cavity in here. And then in this cavity, we will put some bacon. And then we're gonna put some cheese. Put a little, put a little cheese. Okay. I think it said to just make like a little like cap. Because it doesn't really have a device to top it off. There's no way that's what that's the, there's no way that's how you're supposed to do that. Maybe you're just supposed to. I mean, that'll work, right? You can just kind of smash this down in here. It's almost like Play-Doh. Like Play-Doh, but uh, you can get salmonella from this. Or other various diseases, probably. And this thing has like a little... Yeah. 
like a little plate. And there's your stuffed burger patty. Let's make two of them, because why not? Oh, we're going too fast. Still. For this one, let's, uh, let's crack an egg inside of this one. See what happens. This could be disastrous. I don't know how I'm gonna put the cap on because it's, it's gonna be all liquid. Maybe we'll come up with uh, another new culinary invention. There we go. Egg. There's probably some, some chef watching this that is just clawing their eyes out. Man, I'm really struggling here. Maybe if I was just a little bit better at cooking, maybe that would do it, huh? I mean, that's like a whole, a whole nother patty. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of oozing out the edges. Oh, no. Oh, it's stuck to the thing, too. Okay. All right. Oh, it's falling apart. Okay, that needs to get on the grill fast. No need to panic. We're just, uh, everything's just about to go wrong. No need to, no need to panic. Uh, that can go here, that can go there. Who cares about salmonella? Raw eggs all over the table along with the raw meat. What a petri dish we're creating here. All right, get the grill. It should still be decently hot. Okay. The bottom of it broke so i don't know how much of it's going to leak out i'm hoping that it will heat up fast enough that it won't that it'll like start solidifying the egg so that it won't leak that is the intention anyway i might have to try that one more time but that just seems like it's going to be an absolute disaster it's starting to sizzle <clears throat> that could be really good i'll put this other one on a little bit once it gets hot if you guys don't see a video for a couple weeks after this probably got food poisoning Okay, that egg has got to be getting solidified. That meat is just so, like... The meat just wants to fall apart so bad. This might not be that good. That egg just seems like it wants to... Just make the meat so just, like, brittle and stuff. Oh, this is getting... <laughs> this is getting worse. The edge of it is just, like, falling out. And it's like, oh man, the grill's heated up all the way, so I'll go ahead and put this one on. That one probably has a way better chance. Let's go ahead and close that lid. Turn that fan on. Now let's let these things cook for a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and give these things a flip. This one right here. Ah, huh. okay. That actually looks... Pretty good. Oh, this one's... The egg is still gooey inside. Alright. Oh, that's gonna be rough. Maybe I'll turn the temperature down from 450 to 350. So what, what's gonna happen is that out, the outside edges are gonna burn and the middle is still gonna be raw. So maybe we'll turn the temperature down. Maybe that'll allow them to cook more thoroughly. The egg one, I mean, this is like, not burnt, but it's got a, it's pretty crispy. And the other side is still completely raw and the egg is still completely gooey. So yeah, let's get on 350. Let them sit for a little while and we'll just hope that the centers are gonna be done. All right, I do think these are done. They even might be a little bit overdone, but for the purposes of our experiment, two buns that I should have toasted, but I didn't. This one is our regular uh, bacon and cheese that the cheese, some of the cheese was leaking out of. Looks like, looks delicious. This one is our, <laughs> the one that's got egg inside of it. that uh, it's pretty much just two patties with egg in the middle. I really don't want to get burned. I feel like the center of these are gonna be like really hot. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really hot. 
So let's go ahead and take some bites here. I'm gonna go with the egg one first, just because I feel like it's gonna be the most likely to disappoint me. And I wanna end on a good note. I don't wanna be disappointed. Let's see. It's drippy. I don't know if that's a grease or egg. I mean, it just tastes like a burger. I felt like the egg didn't even do anything. Mmm. I got a piece of egg that time. Interesting. The egg didn't really... Just didn't really do that much. Now, <laughs> let's try the bacon and the cheese. Now this one... This isn't good, I'm going to be disappointed. Mmm. Whenever you bite into that, the cheese and the bacon together, that is so good. Mmm. Mmm. That's a winner. That is so good. For some reason, it tastes even better than just having, like, bacon and cheese on a burger. There's something about it being, like, in the middle. That just like does something just a little bit extra. I'm actually I'm gonna I'm going to destroy both of these as soon as I turn this camera off. They're both pretty good, but this one, the bacon and cheese, absolutely amazing. I highly recommend trying that. All right, and our next item, something else that uh, allows you to make things that are stuffed. We have a stuffed pancake maker. Last time we did a stuffed waffle maker and I looked on Amazon and I found out that they also make stuffed pancake makers. So in the stuffed waffle maker, we did uh, bacon and pie filling. I feel like stuff like this is gonna be geared more towards uh, like dessert type of, type of stuff. We're gonna go with another dessert type thing. And what we're gonna be stuffing into it is uh, Reese's Pieces. And yes, the box is open because I have no self-control. I've never used this before, but let's hope that we get it right. So from my understanding, you put a base layer down, you put your filling on, whatever you're using, close it, dump more on the top, and then you wait. Let's go heavy too. There we go, beautiful. And then we close this. You guys are going to have a fit in the comments if this works out perfect the first try. You're not going to know what to do. I'm not liking how there's like no way to know if it's full or not. You just kind of have to hope. Okay, that actually looks like it's too much. That's what it is. Should have known. Once again, I overfilled the thing. Yeah, that's going to just bubble up and overfill. Remember what I said about uh, you guys are gonna go crazy if I if this all works out smoothly at the first try? That's not gonna happen. I also have no idea how long I'm supposed to wait. I don't think this thing came with any directions. Scratch that. It did come with directions. That is, that's bubbling up even more. Oh. Do we think it's gonna just pour out when I open it? Oh, no. It's actually like pretty good. It's got some uh, raw batter in the middle. That thing's got some heft to it. Aside from uh, all of this, that actually worked out beautifully. Kind of thinking, ooh, that's hot. I don't have anything to cut this with. I don't think I have a knife, so we'll just use the spatula. Welcome to my cooking show, where we do everything wrong. <laughs> okay, let's see what the middle looks like. Okay. Minus that one little, little mess up at the top where I overloaded it with batter. It looks like, I mean, it looks good. I feel like definitely could have used more Reese's Pieces. I'll take a little bite out of this corner because there's Reese's Pieces in this corner. This thing is hot. 
Oh, that's good. Man, that's good. One thing I will say is that this pancake is massive. If you were going to eat one of these, this whole thing, this is like probably easily four or five pancakes worth of batter. I don't know, split it with somebody type pancake or something. Here's another nice bite over here, it looks like. If you want to get diabetes really fast, this is probably a good route to go. Even if you don't have one of these, put some Reese's Pieces in your pancakes. That is the chocolate and the peanut butter. Man, first try. I mean, if I if I had used this, if I used this like 10 times, I would have this thing down to a science and it would be flawless. But even though it worked almost perfect on the first try, just a little little mess up. If I if somebody came to me and asked me, should I get a stuffed pancake maker or a stuffed waffle maker? I would 100% go with the waffle maker. I still, I think the waffle maker is better, but this is not bad. The only reason that I could see someone choosing the pancake maker over the waffle maker would be is if like maybe you're allergic to waffles and you can only have pancakes, then I could see where you would want to go with the pancake maker. But other than that, I mean, I would just go with the waffle maker. Options are endless. You could go Reese's Pieces. You could go M&M's. You could put cut up candy bars. You could put bacon, pie filling, Nutella. I mean, you, the options are just endless. Even though I made a huge mess, this thing works pretty good. All right, and for our last item, we have the Egg Timer Pro. This is a, I don't know, some type of polymer thing that you put inside of a pot and whenever you are boiling eggs, it's like a thermometer and it tells you whenever they're gonna be soft, medium, or hard. Um, so we're going to plop that in there and we have three eggs. We're gonna take them out, take one of each out at different uh, levels, see which one is which. See, uh, see if this thing works. I guess we just gotta wait for the, for the water to get warm and uh, it should show us something. All right, so you can see the way that, that this thing is working. I didn't realize it worked this way. It starts off, it's kind of like a reverse thermometer, I guess. It starts off red and then it turns white as it's done. The part that says soft is pretty much completely white. So we will choose an egg to take out to be soft. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing for medium and hard. And then we'll cut them open and see where they're at. All right, we've got our other two eggs. So we have Soft, medium, and hard. So let's start off with soft. I mean, hey, that's soft. The whole thing is pretty soft. The yolk's runny. Don't know why you would want that that way. I don't know who's gonna eat that. Here's medium. I mean, that seems, the yolk, wow, it's hot. <laughs> the yolk is pretty, not solid, but tiny bit runny. The egg white's very, very soft. And here we should have hard. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, significant difference in the yolks. Well, maybe not a lot, but kind of. That actually works out pretty, pretty good. I didn't think that would work that good. I don't know uh, how smart it is to boil whatever this is made out of with your eggs in case there's like chemicals leaching off of this or whatever. So from that standpoint, I don't know how safe that is, but if you're comfortable with that and you, you know, if you only want ones that are soft or whatever, it seems to be a pretty good product and it seems to do what it says it does. That's a win. That's all the products that we have. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.